Welcome to the Royal Academy of Dance. It gives me great pleasure to join you on World Ballet Day to share just some of the ways in which ballet and dance has had a positive impact on people's lives over the last year. We've got lots to share with you today. We will see how RAD teachers from all over the world have kept their students engaged through the lockdowns. We'll catch up with some of our Fontaine finalists about to embark on their professional careers. And our president, Dame Darcy Bussell, invites you into the studio as she coaches RAD trained dancer Anna Rose O'Sullivan, who is now a principal dancer with the Royal Ballet. And now, this moment is for you. We believe that everyone can dance and that dancing helps to promote health and happiness. We want you to be part of World Ballet Day, so I invite you to take part in our user-friendly, ballet-inspired warm-up. Over to RAD teacher Rina Bhattacharji. Thanks, Gerard. So, at the start of a dance class, we always start with a warm-up, and the purpose of that is to really increase blood flow, get the body moving, get the joints lubricated, and just make sure that we're mentally and physically prepared for exercise. So, with that in mind, we thought we'd lead you through a little ballet-inspired warm-up. We are going to start with the feet in a nice stable position. Now, if you're not that mobile or you're not feeling too stable today, then you're very welcome to do this sitting down on the edge of a bed, sofa, chair, anything like that. Starting with the feet in a second, for those of you that do ballet, we're going to be starting with some head rolls. So we're taking the head down and up to the side and down, out of the side and down and lift four of these down and lift. We're now going to do a little pour de bras and we're going to bring the arms across in a third position as we do our head roll. Now we're taking these positions a little bit further than we would with a bit more body movement than we would in a nice placed ballet class just to make sure that we're really working into our ranges of motion. After we've done four of those we're going to start taking the arms overhead into a fourth position reaching up and over as we go and we do four of those as well. The last version we're going to do a bend and then reach across, bend, reach across and bend, reach across, adding a little bit of rotation if you feel ready. After four of those we're putting our feet in parallel and we're going to start working on the lower body and I'll turn out a little bit. So we're going to start bend, turn out and stretch. Bend, parallel, and stretch. Bend, turn, out, and stretch. Four of these as well, and stretch. We're gonna add some arms in. Bend, turn, out, lift the arms. Bend, parallel, all the way up. Fifth position, down, and out, and lift. Down, in, and up, also four. We're then going to add a little rise just to really start to challenge ourselves here. And up. We're going to do six of these and the last one we're going to hold up and then get ready for a slightly faster tempo for some bounces. We're going to bounce two, three, four. Then we're doing slightly bigger ones, letting our heels come off the ground. One, two, three, four. Small jumps, two, three, four. And then springs, one foot to the other, three, four. We're going to do the same in first position, three, four. Bouncing, two, three, four. Small jumps, two, three, four. And spring, two, three, four. We're going to repeat all of that. Parallel once more, turned out once more. And then at the end, we're going to do a big reach of the arms. And then breathe out, ready to start our day. OK, let's try that with some music. Thank you, Martin. Nice stable position of the legs, arms relaxed by your side. And heavy head, down, up to the side, down, up to the side, and down, up, and down. Up, we have the arms coming across, and up, and down, up, and down, up, and down. Up, reaching the arms over the head. So we go to a fourth position and down. Reach and down. Reach and last one. Now we're adding a big bend of the legs and we bend and stretch and bend. Stretch and bend. Stretch and bend. Stretch, feet in parallel. Bend and a lift and bend in and stretch 
and bend out and stretch. Last one, now we have the arms. We go, bend and a lift. In, arms up and down, arms out and lifting up. Now with a rise, down and lift. Down, in and reach. Down, lift and reach up, two more. And hold it there, slowly down. And we're ready for our faster section. We go. One, two, three, four. Small bounces. Two, three, four. Bigger jumps. Two, three, springs. First position. Heels off. Small jumps. And we spring. Same again. Small jumps, springs, first position, big springs, reaching arms up, breathe out, I hope you enjoyed doing that warm up with us. And now, back to Gerard. Thank you to Rena and our pianist, Martin Cleave. I hope you feel good after that and ready to take on the rest of your day. The RAD has a network of passionate and creative dance teachers located in 85 countries around the world. Over the last 18 months particularly, they have been crucial in keeping their communities happy, healthy, and inspired. We are about to meet some teachers from around our world who illustrate the power of dance to improve people's lives. First up, we meet RAD teacher Hong Zhu, who has a Chinese-speaking school in London and was able to reach students around the world through online classes she introduced during the pandemic. Hello, my name is Hong. Children call me Miss Hong or Rainbow Lashi because Hong means rainbow in Chinese. I graduated from Bay program in 2017 and now I'm based in London teaching children and adult ballet. Actually, a lot of things happened during the pandemic. After I have discovered the advantage of technology, I initiated Rainbow Cloud lessons so that I can meet students all over the world. I also tried early ducklings, imagine that ballet classes happen at seven o'clock in winter time in the UK. And also I've tried the uh, live ballet class with live pianists. It was fantastic. Also, I found some strengthening exercise for parents who worked from home. By doing this, I want everyone involved to have a positive mindset. Although we can't change the world, we can change ourselves. At first, I thought ballet can never be taught online, but then my mind changed. Two of my grade 7 students learned the whole syllabus via Zoom, and both of them achieved distinction afterwards. Zoom classes helps me to carry on my learning. I like following uh, Miss Hong's video clip to do exercise from time to time. Um, makes me feel um, energetic and positive. I think dance makes me more confident. If I keep practicing, I can make progress and achieve my goals day by day. Ballet Zoom class has enabled me to watch back recorded videos. This is beneficial as everyone has their own expectations and aspects to work on. Dance has helped me to become more resilient as I'm always looking for areas of improvement, polishing details and reaching perfection. As a dance teacher, I would love to pass my love and passion to all my students, no matter their age, gender and ability. After what you have done for your students, the reward is enormous and priceless. I'm very proud to be an RED teacher. Mm. 
My name is Shelley Isaac Clark. I'm the principal of Isaac Clark Academy of Dance, and we are in a school in the seaside town of Mumbles in southwest Wales. Faced with the enormity of the um, pending pandemic in March 2020, I felt that we couldn't stop dancing when everything that we knew as our day-to-day -day life was taken away from us. I felt that I had to find an alternative to keep a social connection with all my dancers, from the little ones through to our Silver Swans. And I very quickly moved on to um, digital dance classes. And I felt that it wasn't perfect. However, it gave us a regularity to our week. It meant that we um, had normality when there wasn't much else around that was normal at that time. And many of my dancers had had recent challenging times. Um, some lived alone, and I felt that this gave them a chance to keep that connection alive. Um, it gave them a chance to remain physically active, um, to stimulate their mental um, agility. And I felt that we could provide a holistic experience, albeit a different one, by, by joining our classes together and dancing online. Once we had navigated the technology, and often with laughter, some frustration, and we had ironed out some of the technical issues, they took to it immediately, um, and they were fantastic. During such a dreadful time, it was wonderful to have something to look forward to every week. For me, it was a lifeline because um, I was looking after my husband. He had cancer and was um, terminally ill. And without it, I wouldn't have been able to go into normal classes. And it was just something I could focus on. And it was very, very special for me. It was fantastic. It was, it was really wonderful to have that discipline every week to continue throughout what's been a really challenging and difficult time for everybody. It became, I feel, a lifesaver for many of them. It was the one hour in the week where they came together as a group. They were able to enjoy listening to music, enjoy um, responding as a group. Um, we did a lot of activities online that still kept up that social connection. So our summer celebration project was a whole school performance that was originally arranged during the lockdown period and was then realised when things began to ease and the students performed in small groups, albeit outside most venues. Each class within the school had a small section of dance which they performed and then we edited it together to make a film. We chose to highlight the plight of our local theatres and their staff because of course they were so cruelly affected during the pandemic period. We asked anyone who watched the digital performance to actually contribute towards their charitable funds and that way to help to secure their future. We decided to organise the summer celebration project as it represented a culmination of our aims during lockdown, to remain connected and to be creative. So our aim was to allow opportunities to maximise contact for pupils with their peers and teachers, not just to enable learning to continue, but in order to maintain students' emotional and social well-being. So classes continued live on Zoom and we also made use of virtual classrooms. Our second aim was to be creative. And the need to be creative stems from our basic human need to express and to be seen and to be heard. And dance is unique amongst expressive arts as it's a non-verbal form of communication. And therefore it allows children the ability to express through movement perhaps where words fail. Especially important we felt during this challenging time during the pandemic. So having also been starved with face-to-face -face opportunities of seeing each other dance, the performance was an attempt to really resolve the situation and celebrate as a school once again our love of dance. Despite the challenges we all face, there are always solutions to be found. New ways of doing things and not to be afraid to take risks. 
We need to find ways to adapt and know that although we can't control what happens to us, we can choose how to react. I benefited from the summer celebration project as I learned a dance with my whole ballet class and I made some friendships that I never thought I could have had before. And it made me feel that I really just belonged at Dance Centre and it made me work really hard and it just made me feel so happy being back in the studios outside after the, the whole lockdown thing with the little zoom boxes. Finally being able to get back together with my class instead of seeing them over tiny little boxes on the screen and felt like I could dance with everyone again. I think I benefited from the summer celebration project because it showed us that we were all brought together again after a very annoying lockdown and that we were one big family again. I really enjoyed the fact that we got to all meet up again and it was the first time we met up in ages and we got to create this dance together and add our own bits and dance all together and it was just so like heartwarming. I think dancing has helped me to be a lot more resilient because it's showed me that when you want something for yourself, you can keep on pushing and going and practicing until you eventually get it. And when you, when you do get it, you feel like you really achieved something brilliant. Hi, my name is Bryony Martin. I have a ballet school here in Wanaka, New Zealand called Point Central and I'm currently studying on the Professional Dancers Postgraduate Teaching Certificate. Across the Line was a performance piece that combined skateboarding and ballet, um, two very different skills and choreographies coming together in a really challenging environment which was outside in the local skate park. It was put together with a large cast of students from our local high school and we combined their skills in a show that was free for the Wanaka community to come along and watch. Across the Line was born from the desire to connect kids in our, in our town with each other and to connect our community with the kids. It was to take the opportunity to restore confidence after and between lockdowns. It was very challenging dancing ballet on concrete bowls and on ramps, skateboarding amongst 20 dancers. While these kids attend the same school, the genres and the culture are very different and neither cultures has crossed the line into the other. I've benefited from this project because I learned that you can dance anywhere and it doesn't just have to be in the studio. Skateboarding and dancing are two different sports. They're all very different but they're both creative so it was good to like connect the two together. I got to like learn how similar dancers and skaters really are in the way of like we're but all we're all really so hard working. Dance helps me be resilient because I know if I can't do something I can just keep trying and eventually I'll get it. It's really helped me be resilient because you can be more confident on stage in front of other people so it can help you be confident in loads of other things in life as well. The impact of Cross the Line was one of breaking stereotypes, both the public's misconception of skater kids and of ballet kids, also within the groups themselves. The cast learnt to mutually respect each other's skills, their dedication and their artistry, and supported each other, gained self-confidence by performing in an outdoor public arena, and also relearned a positive connection after the times that we'd spent in lockdown surrounded by anxiety and segregation. A huge thank you to our teachers for sharing their work with us. It is so inspiring to see firsthand the impact that dance and RAD teachers can have on the lives of people and their wider communities around the world. Such as the project we saw in New Zealand that brought different groups together around dance. Dance truly does connect us all. Part of the tradition of ballet is that knowledge is passed down from dancer to dancer. Our president, Dame Darcy Bustle, recently coached dancer Anna Rose O'Sullivan in Swan Lake. We will not only share some highlights of that coaching, but also some thoughts they shared on the role of dance in developing a positive mindset and staying resilient while performing at a high standard. Let's see what they've been working on. So a little bit more lift in the eyes on the seats, mm -hmm. so that you're not looking at yourself in the you know, be... Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. Let's try that once more. Okay. So eyes are different. 
Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. You're a naturally strong dancer. Mm. No, no, it's true. And and I mean, I remember you know having a good jump yeah. and that ease, but then you don't have to think about it so much. Yeah. But actually, just the take off and. You know, like that. Mm. I think in the dance world we're very used to critique from a very young age, but I think it's about flipping the switch and just being open to that positive critique so that you can improve and looking at the negatives as a positive. You know, if a coach said something to you. It's because they care and they want it to be better for you. We are taught from a very young age that criticism is part of the job. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how you improve. The criticism is a vital part of our industry. So you have to turn it around instantly. So you can't take offence to it because you're going, oh, thank goodness she, she noticed me. You know, she, she cares, you know, all of that. You know, there's that thing where maybe I was layering quite a lot of corrections onto somebody and like Anna Rose during that uh, coaching session, you do have to monitor, obviously, how much you give that person, so how much they can handle. And I think that's when somebody goes, hang on a minute, I can't cope with that mu much, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and so that is a balance. And I noticed that and you can usually see I mean when I was a dancer I would just freeze over and go oh, I can't take any more <laughs> off <laughs> but it, the way you put it you know the physicality sides of you know understanding your body and you have to understand your weaknesses as a dancer and there you know and obviously appreciate your strengths and how you can balance those out and how can you hide those weaknesses and that is part of your job you know and so you have to be very open about yourself and who you are and what you're capable of but you know the coach is there to make you believe that you can do more and mm -hmm. that's really exciting you know things you don't know about yourself yeah Change more, the other one, change, exactly. Don't make it here, mm -hmm. yeah, open, the interior. Come down, da da da, yeah, bye bye. That's nice, but, up, uh, yeah, da 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 da. Now, okay. this arm, to help you support yourself, no matter who you're dancing in front of as a dancer in training, you're educated in sort of your mental um, ability to, like I said before, remove yourself from a situation. So I think you're so used to the critique that it doesn't ever phase you, whether it's very strong, harsh critique or more gentle approach to coaching. I think being a dancer, you're, you're kind of armoured with that mentality of, well, I'm going to take what I can from this and use it to my advantage. I'd say it's so built around the structure of the training. So, you know, um, it's a brilliant focus to distract yourself as well. Yeah. Um, and, and we're lucky because it's a physical action as well. I mean, it's like having a meditation, like doing yoga yeah. or something like that. It's a, it's a great method to focus on the positives and what you're doing for you. I have fallen so many times I was actually told that I was never pushing myself unless I fell yeah same so, yeah, so that was sort <laughs> of uh, part of my training as well but um, I suppose more seriously something like an injury and coming back from something like that I think that was a massive lesson that I was not prepared for I've had the doubt and am I going to be the same dancer? Will anybody want to work with me again? And blah, blah, blah. and that trying to get back into shape and how many months that takes. And, and that confidence takes a long time. And I didn't know how to, uh, to help myself there. But I did realise, uh, you know, having injuries, probably quite a young age in the company, 
that I had to learn from them and mm -hmm. I had to learn pretty quick. And it was just as, as Anna Rose said, is putting your mind in a space where you go, okay, how am I going to make this work for myself? Okay, I might not be part of the action, might not be doing all the, the wonderful uh, performances or stuff, but if I'm behind the scenes, I'm going to watch and I'm going to learn more now from watching than I would be participating. Because mm -hmm. you do get lost in the moment, uh, often when you're part of something, but sometimes when you step back and you have to look at it, my goodness, the change and, and, and the purpose and why, and suddenly this, the hunger that hits you, go, I've got to be part of this again. And the competition mm -hmm. comes back into you and it kind of sets up a light again. And I will be better. <laughs> yeah. A lot of our training when we were off was via Zoom. So we were all in our kitchens and our lounges, you know, doing our class work, which was very hard. But again, I, I suppose that made us all a bit more resilient and very hungry to come back. And I suppose you miss something when you don't have it for a time. So, um, yeah, we're all just raring to go. My advice, which was always given to me, is be able to laugh at my mistakes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> that they're going to happen and it's part of the job and mistakes are there to help you learn. And so as long as you can laugh at them and not get, oh, oh my God, <laughs> then uh, you can move forward. Thank you both Darcy and Anna Rose for sharing those insights with us. As teachers, it is a good reminder that we need to think about how our corrections and critiques are being received. And for students, it is good advice to own your mistakes and make sure you learn from them. So many dancers in companies around the world started with an RAD teacher. Anna Rose is no exception. And in fact, she took part in the Phyllis Bedell's bursary, followed by the Jenny International Ballet Competition, which is now named The Fontaine. Following in her footsteps are three dancers who have just taken part in the Fontaine, which was held completely online for the first time ever this year. It was an amazing opportunity for dancers and coaches in multiple countries to connect with each other. We were so delighted to see a record number of candidates taking part in this unique experience. But it was not without personal challenges, and so their achievements are all the more laudable, and we are so proud of all of them. We now meet three of this year's finalists who share their experiences and what they will carry with them as they prepare for their careers. My name is Alice MacArthur and I am 17 years old from Aotearoa, New Zealand. I'm Amber Mitchell Knight. I'm 18 years old and I'm from Melbourne, Australia. My name is Taylor Debye. I'm 18 and I'm from Johannesburg, South Africa. My Fontaine experience was definitely an experience of a lifetime. I was very, very fortunate to be able to do the last ever Jeanne in 2019 in Canada and the first ever online Fontaine competition in 2021. So I feel really honoured to be able to say that I'm part of that legacy and that history of the RAD. I also think the Fontaine is something that so many people dream of doing from the time that they very first start ballet. Um, you know, everybody looks up to the alumni that has previously danced in the competition and I just, I'm so excited and so grateful that I can say I was, I'm now part of that alumni. I don't think it could have happened at a better time. I think everybody needed something to work towards and something to like have that motivation and that goal. My experience this year has been so incredible and so life-changing and being able to compete as a finalist has been a dream of mine for so long. I also feel like I've grown so much as a dancer as well as an individual and I've been able to find a new sense of confidence and belief in myself. I felt really proud to be part of a competition with such a legacy and it was amazing just to be seen by such esteemed judges. Uh, for me, it was a hugely positive experience and a great learning journey over a really unpredictable year. And I'm really thankful to the Royal Academy of Dance for the opportunity. Um, I last performed to a live audience well over a year ago, so it was lovely to perform again, even though it was online. And working towards the competition was really very rewarding. My main challenges were related to travel and border closures. I was traveling from Germany to New Zealand at the end of the dance school year. Uh, so I needed to fit in two weeks of government managed isolation. I ended up with one day to prepare and video my classwork. And I learned that it is really hard to keep up your fitness in a tiny space. 
I think I had about two square meters of practice space for 14 days. Um, it made me really appreciate the space in a dance studio. <laughs> Living in Melbourne, we've pretty much been in and out of lockdown constantly, which has been pretty tough both physically, like not being able to be in the studio and practice, but also mentally. A couple of days before I was going to film, we got announced a lockdown would start within a number of hours. And so I had to rush back to the studio after having already done a day of training to try and film my solos and get as best a take I could. The day of my semi-finals filming, there was a massive COVID outbreak in the venue that I was supposed to be filming at. And so needless to say, I was dancing in a freshly fumigated, sterilized studio, which definitely smelt a little funny. And two days before my finals filming, I actually fell quite badly and there was lots of tears and drama and I was sent for x-rays, which is definitely not something you want to be doing two days before your final filming. Thankfully, everything was fine and I managed to get through my filming, no problems. Um, so that was definitely a challenge just to overcome that, I mean, physically and mentally. After spending majority of my last two years dancing from my kitchen bench, I will really never take the space and the studio and even the stage just for granted. I never really realised how much I appreciated the studio and having space to move and interaction with people like my friends and my teachers and COVID has definitely taught me about myself but it has also reminded me why I love to dance and why I want to pursue it as a career. It's not easy to be in a garage studio and working on yourself uh, with no live feedback. It's not normal for an artist to work like that. And I don't think it's healthy for an artist to work like that. But, you know, we have to push through it because we love what we do and you have to sacrifice and you have to, you know, things are difficult. Ballet is not an easy path, but the ballet training has definitely made me a lot more resilient. And that helps with outside life as well. You know, life isn't easy, life's not simple, but I can always take the lessons that I've learned from my ballet training and use it for the rest of my life. I have learned so much, especially studying the solo that I performed in. I performed Raymonda Act Two Variation Two, and it's a very, very challenging solo. And I think definitely taking part in the Fontaine. It's pushed me to work on these steps and work on my challenges and try and get them as best I can, as consistent as I can. We were so lucky to have been able to have coaching sessions with Ashley Page, our commissioned choreographer. It was just amazing. It was definitely challenging though. I mean, it's not easy to learn a solo online in such a short space of time. And so I think we all became a lot more adaptable, you know, learning that quickly online. My teachers have been some of the most incredible and influential people over the past few years. They've really made me push myself and really motivated me and kept me accountable for myself as well. I just couldn't be more grateful to have them in my life and have them helping me train and they've, especially over the past year, created classes that are friendly for different environments and that. And it's really proven that I can keep my strength up and they've helped with that and helped with me to continue to progress. I have been offered a contract as the Jet Parker Young Artist Program at Queensland Ballet, which I will be taking up next year and getting the opportunity to perform with the company and get experience with a number of other young dancers who are looking forward to joining the company and pursuing it as a career. I'm about to do my A-level exams in a month's time. And after that, I have a contract to start work next year as a professional ballerina, which I'm very, very excited about. And I can't believe it's happening. All the hard work has paid off. I am in my second and second to last year at the John Cranko Schule, uh, my first year in the academy. So I'll do this year and then next year is like my graduation year. Um, and we're rehearsing at the moment for the 50th anniversary gala, which will be at the start of December and also the Christmas show. 
So I'm really looking forward to being back on stage with a live audience. Ballet training requires focus, determination and grit. Um, and it was amazing for me to do well in the Fontaine competition, but there have been other competitions and exams, especially when I was younger, where I didn't do well at all. And I think the ups and downs so far have made me less focused on outcomes and more focused on the journey and the enjoyment of dance itself. This, along with the commitment to training that is needed, has definitely helped me build resilience. I think this year has taught me to appreciate the now a bit more and not to worry about tomorrow so much. I've also learned from the Fontaine that it doesn't matter whether you win a medal or not, it doesn't matter if you made it to the finals or not. Just having that experience and just taking part is such an achievement in itself. Um, so I can always be proud of the fact that I made it I made it to the finals, which is always a dream. You know, it's always been a dream of mine and I just am so happy that I've been able to achieve that. We wish Amber, Alice and Taylor the very best of luck and success for the future. I would also like to thank you so much for joining us. We really do believe that everybody can dance. So if you have been inspired by anything you've seen today, be sure to visit royalacademyofdance.org to find out more. You can also keep the celebrations going with us by tuning into a live Q&A on our TikTok channel with Tiani Heap at 3 p.m. UK time. Tiani won a bronze medal at the Genet in 2010. She's now a first soloist at the Royal Ballet. Join her there to ask all your burning ballet questions. And keep following the action by checking hashtag World Ballet Day. We hope to see you again soon.